that's the usual update. And for those who were not at, so, uh, at our previous meetings, you're probably not familiar with this, just reminder and, and through mention it. That's our goal, um, reducing cholera deaths by 90% by 2030, getting, it, getting the disease eliminated in at least 20 countries. And we have the three axes of the roadmap. Uh, one concerns the early detection of outbreak for immediate control and containment. The second one is the focus on the hotspot for prevention, uh, multi-sectoral preventive interventions. And, and the third one is the, the reinforcement of the coordination mechanism at the global and country level through all that uh, partners. I'm sure the list here is not updated, uh, but we'll do that very soon. That's essentially what we want to do, moving away from the, the usual emergency type of response to a much more development-oriented prevention and control um, objective, bridging, in a sense, emergency and development. And, it, and OCV uh, has a key, have a key role to play, and we have seen in the last few years how uh, critical it was to engage a number of countries. So what we have seen over the last couple of years very strong, through, I think, very uh, strong and, in my view, unprecedented engagement of countries. We have today, I think, 12 countries, 12 endemic countries represented from Bangladesh to 80 through a number of African countries. And I just got a few examples here, like the Z's, the Zambia, Zanzibar, and Zimbabwe. If you find another one, interesting, uh, are all launching their elimination plans. The Zambia had a special event with this, the Zambia delegation at the WHA uh, targeting 2025. I think they're all targeting 2025, and are uh, all located in the same area. Uh, we have uh, people from 18 in the room, and they will tell us later today the, the progress they are making uh, towards elimination, they are targeting 2022. Uh, and we have a number of countries like DRC, Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan, Yemen, uh, which have engaged on very large scale uh, OCV campaigns, millions of, of, of doses. The details will be given uh, later with very significant results. Bangladesh, the Prof Azad is here, uh, is finalizing their multi sectoral cholera control plan. Um, <coughs> And I was recently in, uh, in Ethiopia. They couldn't make it today, but uh, they have declared no cholera, which is first step towards control. The first thing you have to do is recognize you have a problem uh, before addressing it. So Ethiopia has no case of cholera, for your information. And we've got also very strong engagement of, of the partners, of the task force, and the donors. I've listed a few here. Um, I may not go through all of this, but. The CDC, for example, is providing uh, technical support with in-country deployment of, of experts, um, particularly in the, in the Horn of Africa. We have the Fondation Merieux supporting us for the meetings, and they're also working on the development of a website that will present first um, prototype, I think, this afternoon. Uh, we have the colleagues from the Red Cross Federation. Uh, they have launched recently the One Wash project, very ambitious, uh, targeting uh, wash interventions in the cholera hotspot. We presented this afternoon. Uh, Hopkins, with a number of, of support as well, just focus here on the hotspot uh, identification. Or a number of NGOs, uh, most of them in the room today, supporting in particular for the OCV campaigns, others for the WASH interventions, the UNICEF supporting with the coordination of the WASH working group. The donors also engage and get support uh, since the beginning of the, of the revitalization of the task force in 2014. Gavi supporting, providing a lot of support, of course, on vaccine, including operational costs, technical assistance in countries uh, and surveillance. We have on, day, on Wednesday a meeting organized by the Welcome Trust. Uh, the Welcome Trust, uh, as you probably know, has launched a call for proposals in October for research on cholera, uh, and they will present their, their activities and their prospect uh, for, for, the, for the future uh, on Wednesday. And we have what I see also happening, and that's very important for us, of course, that the donors, the development donors, uh, more and more focus their support to the, to the cholera hotspot. So thanks to, to, the, to, the, to the Asian uh, MOH for sharing that, 
that slide and that's the progress they are making. Um, there are less and less cases reported in Haiti. Uh, they will give us more details later on, but um, this is very promising. We have the colleague Joseph here from South Sudan. He will tell us about the situation there. Unless there is news recently, they have no cases reported since more, no 18 months, uh, which is exceptional, I think, in a place like South Sudan. We have colleagues from Nigeria that will tell us about the uh, very dramatic improvement of the situation in a, in, a, in a very difficult place to work with in uh, Borno State in the northeast uh, of the country, but I think across the northern part of the, of the country, which is usually highly endemic for cholera, we see less and less cases. They have used, they have used very large a number of doses of vaccines. Uh, I think we have people from, from people from Zimbabwe as well. An outbreak started in uh, early September last year, and everybody was scared because, of course, remember everybody remembered the, the situation in 2008. They so have been extremely reactive uh, and very successful in controlling the outbreak within two months. Uh, because of the, it was very focused in, in Harare, and they also deploy all the all the, the classic measures plus a large campaign against uh, uh, with OCV. They have no cases, I think, reported this year until now. Um, I've tried to summarize here the, the successes of OCV. I want to insist a little bit on this because it's very critical for us to, to engage the countries, show the success, show that before that, we also say, okay, cholera comes with the rainy season, there's nothing we can do. We have shown with that sort of successes that, yes, we can do something about it and engage the countries. Uh, we have in Bangladesh, for example, I don't know if you remember, but uh, when the Rohingyas uh, uh, came to the country, uh, when was it? Uh, October, I forgot when it was, but about uh, 2017, I believe, and uh, immediately the, the, the Ministry of Health vaccinated with almost 900,000 doses. We had no outbreak uh, over there. Uh, we have uh, Jose Paolo from Mozambique. He will tell us about the, that story. That, that's the slide. That's the epic curve here, post, uh, post cyclone. Uh, he died. Uh, they were very quick, again, very quick in asking for, for vaccine, vaccinated within six days, 900,000 people. And you see how the, the campaign dropped. Of course, all the other measures were also in place, but it's very uh, exceptional to see that sort of uh, immediate drop of cases. We have Somalia using 3 million doses, South Sudan, I mentioned 3.4 million, Yemen. Uh, in places like Yemen, uh, they managed to get more than 90% vaccine coverage. It's administrative coverage, we don't have the survey, but I think it's quite a good result. Uh, they, they use 2.7 million doses, they will, of course, use more. And I mentioned Zimbabwe already, but we have probably others. Uh, so that's what we have seen in terms of, of course, OCV use. Uh, when you see that sort of success, first things you do is to ask for more and, and multiply that sort of action. In 2018, we have shipped uh, more than 17 million doses, but got requests for more than 100 million. Um, teaser already at end of May, we had uh, request. We got requests for 14.5 million doses already, and we already shipped 10 million doses. So there's very huge demand and growing demand for vaccine. Uh, unfortunately, the, the production capacity is at its maximum today, uh, and that's one of the difficulties we are facing. Uh, we have tried to do a lot on advocacy. The slide what was taken. Uh, two weeks ago at the WHA, and so the question is now who is on the slide? Mm. Tuck, 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 tuck. Um, we had also the resolute the WHA. We had the, what, that sort of side event every year, no one on the WHA, it was the third one. And the next question is what does it mean? WWW, HLPF, EEHF, AHF, etc., etc. Well, on WWW, it's World Water Week. We are going every year now as well, and this year we'll have a, a stand. Right, with Kate and Monica, uh, that's a wash event. The HLPF is a high-level political forum. Uh, the UN went last year. EEHF, I forgot. Emergency Environmental Health Forum. Emergency Environmental Health Forum. It's later this month in Geneva. 
the head chef was the African Health Forum in Capo Verde earlier. So we are trying to, to attend and present and be visible to, to, to different events. If you have more acronyms, they are most welcome. But the idea is really to, to, to show our case. And um, I don't know if you notice on the, on the back slide, on the slide is that every 10 seconds someone is infected with cholera. That's a video that was made by, by the colleagues from IFRC, which is great if you have two minutes to spend. Look at this video. We had a few also developed by, uh, by Gavi, by Gates, and they are all very, I found very, um, very good, very engaging. Bon. Liga is not completely finished, as, as, as Fru said. The road is still long to control uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, well, number one, uh, we are not really clear on where to shoot in all the countries. I, I mean here that the, the mapping of hotspot is really well done in a few countries, but in some others we are a bit blinded, and that's going to make our life a bit difficult. So that's clear. Uh, priority for us in the next couple of years, uh, better understand where to shoot, where to target the, 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 the inter interventions in countries like, for example, India, uh, a country we have uh, Shanta here with us, uh, Shanta Dutta from, from Naisen in Kolkata. Uh, you will, I'm sure I agree with me that it's going to be, for the moment, a bit complicated to know. And we have a couple of countries like this uh, where we don't know where to shoot. Uh, number two, if you look at surveillance uh, Cholera data of, of, of surveillance for cholera, well, the vast majority are just suspected cases. And uh, we have representatives from Yemen, I think, here today. And um, forgive me for being a bit blunt here, but nobody believes that we had one million cases since the beginning of the year or something like this in Yemen. So they're all suspected cholera cases, and that's the report we get everywhere. So unless we improve that capacity for, for monitoring cholera cases, it's going to be super complicated for us. One, to identify the areas where to shoot, and two, to monitor progress on the, uh, on the, on the interventions. So that's absolutely critical as well, and uh, with strong weaknesses in some places. We still have some key countries not engaged. We have a couple of countries in Africa still not reporting cholera, like Sudan, like Djibouti. Uh, so Ethiopia is not reporting. That's great. And we have a big country like India not yet, not yet engaged. Um, some countries, uh, even if they are in stable situations, do a lot of OCV, 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 but fail to engage on watch. It's more complicated, it's longer, it's more costly. But in some of those countries, not many, but we feel that there is a lack of, of very strong engagement, and particularly an engagement beyond the health sector, which is always, which is sometimes a weakness. As I said, we are super short of vaccine supply. We have. Maximum, Guillermo is here, but about 30 million doses maximum in 2019. Uh, so we, we spend our time trying to uh, control the demand. We were over the last few years pushing for this. We need really to, uh, to be uh, more, more strict in a sense today and refuse even some good demands, which is, I can tell you, not very easy to uh, manage. Uh, we also need to seriously reinforce the criteria the last few months have been a bit chaotic for us. Uh, Joanna has left, has been replaced by Margot, who is sitting here. She will start. Don't, don't be shy, Margot. Uh, Margot Nolo is going to replace uh, Joanna. Welcome to her. She will start in two weeks, uh, 10 days. We will negotiate that. Um, that's going to be super. I was just almost alone in terms of management of secretariat. Thanks to the rest of the team to work out, but it was tough. So we are going to reinforce and better structure the. The, sorry, almost finished, the chef. Uh, so what are our priorities at the last slide? Uh, uh, of course, support, that's the priority number one. The roadmap is a country-driven process. Uh, so we, that's number one. We need to support, better support the, priority, uh, the countries who want to implement the roadmap. Um, we are going to discuss that tomorrow, uh, about that mechanism to review and endorse the national cholera plants. Um, we, we need really, there's a strong demand from, from many of you of what I've called GTFCC coordinator in the country to help coordinate things across sector uh, jointly with the, with the national counterpart. And, and as I was saying earlier, we need to re reinforce the surveillance capacities, uh, particularly in those countries. Uh, we need to get on board some key countries not yet engaged. It's a daily work on advocacy as a key role to play here. 
global and national, um, and improve the coordination and leadership mechanism. So uh, we are going to adapt the, the operational model of the task force, uh, giving us better capacity to support the countries. That's going to be the country support platform discussed that tomorrow. It was endorsed. It was recommended during the 2017 uh, GTFCC review and endorsed by this group uh, last June uh, last year. So we are going to implement that. Um, really need to ensure a close interaction between the research activities and the control activities. Uh, and I think that's the willingness as well of the Welcome Trust, making sure that we have that close uh, adjustment of what are the research needs and what the research uh, proposal and um, pro uh, project. Uh, we have established a GTFCC steering committee, which will meet for the first time on Wednesday morning. Um, and the representatives are most of them in the room. Um, very importantly, but it's going to take time, but uh, unless we, uh, we ensure strategic uh, vaccine supply, it's going to be very difficult to sustain the large scale of CV campaigns that, that several countries have engaged on. Um, each time you now I meet uh, senior officials from uh, various countries, the, the first thing is always, I need more vaccine. I, need, I know you need more, but everybody's saying the same thing. And, and that's going to be uh, very critical to, to, to ensure this while uh, bridging with WASH. And we're going to discuss that next week, in the, in the, uh, tomorrow, and, and finalize in the coming weeks, uh, trying to have a very strong advocacy and fundraising uh, strategy, uh, obviously, um, that's going to be critical in the months to come. Thank you very much.